I think what what helps your bet is the game flow. Once they start passing, I'm not sure if they're going to get back to the run. Last game of the slate, another st beautiful storyline, the return of Matt Stafford to Detroit. Um, the Lions are favorite minus three, total is 51, money line is money, minus 175. Um, it sucks that Laporta is out of this game. Um, I think that's a huge blow for the Detroit Lions. Um, you know, and Puka just had a, a, a great ending season. Carson Wentz plus seven and one got into the end zone. Carson Wentz is in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so huh, I have to lean the Rams here. I think Laporta meant that much to this Detroit Lions offense. So I would lean Rams here, but with Laporta out, golf is no he's going he's going to force feed St. Brown. This is. You know, and St. Brown is not quietly in my opinion. I think we talked about who, who he reminds me of, a load of Golden Tate to, to him, just a well a better version of Golden Tate. But if the Rams are going to win this game, they're going to score, and they got to keep up, and this game is going to be throw, throw, throw all day. And who better to throw to your number one target? I think 88 and a half is way too low. I bet you he gets over 100 yards, so I will double dig. Give me over 88 and a half, and I'm taking over. I'm on St. Brown over 100. Well, not even worth it at 100. It's already up. It's at plus 120. I'm at plus money, to be honest with you. So I'll stick where the line is, which is interesting because that 90 is minus 125, but a yard and a half at 88 and a half, it's minus 115. So this is going to be going up here quite really soon. Probably hit 91, I bet you, before the day's over. So if you like this bet, you need to bet it right now. Give me Amonse Brown over 88 and a half yards. I think they'll have a hard time um, slowing him down. One of the better, probably, I don't know, Sharp, you let me know. Um, I'm trying to think anybody better than him. Maybe top five, top six, top six even you, Diddy. Route runners in the league? I'm you can put him right. anywhere. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, like, yeah, I mean. I, Diddy, I, I, Adams, I, Cooper Cup. I think it depends on what, what you're describing as route runners, right? You got underneath route runners, you got intermediate route runners, and then you got deep threat route runners. I mean, he's the whole tree. He's oh, the whole tree. Oh, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't put him as an upper echelon deep, deep ball route runner, but I think he's. Is that, is I, that speed though? Is that just because of speed? Well, I just think he, he doesn't, he doesn't have, yeah, I mean, he doesn't have multiple gears. So when he, when he's shifting in and out of gears at the top of his route, at intermediate routes, like the drop off isn't so instantaneous when he accelerates that like he leaves DBs behind. But I will say underneath routes, his his mental capacity for understanding leverage of a defensive back is probably the best in the NFL. So he understands how to move a DB to get to his spot almost better than any receiver in the NFL. And, and that's, that's like Cooper, that's right? Cup is like that too. Cup yeah, I mean, Cup, like so that. Cup is a big dude. So Cup wins a little bit more with – with uh, he does win with leverage and, and IQ, but he's a bigger dude. So he kind of physical, he kind of boxes guys out. Amon Ra actually makes corners move their feet and then he gets right back to where that corner was. Like it, his just release package, if that's kind of what you want to go, like his release package off the line is the best in the NFL. All right. All right so I like my bet. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sharp, go ahead. Keep talking, man. What you got on the side? What's your best bet if you do have one? I took it at three and a half. Um, it's come down. Right when it opened, I liked three and a half. I'm still not scared at the three. You'd have push protection. I've already talked about Diddy. I would throw I would throw the Rams in an underdog round robin here. I think they're one of the few underdog chances to have a, live dogs that could win. And here's why. We liked the Rams last – or we liked the Lions last week. We gave it out, right? And part of the reason we liked the Lions – was because we said, and I talked about it on the chat, and I didn't understand why, Dan Campbell has a crazy ego, and he wasn't going to rest his starters. He was just going to, for whatever reason, not really care and go for broke next week, last week, and he got his star tight end hurt. 
I hate to say like guys get hurt in football and I get it, but like there's a couple guys you had to not play in that game. We, we argued on the chat a little bit about going for games and if it means anything. And I was on, and, and I didn't think that Dallas needed to go for it. I didn't think the Eagles needed to go for it. And I didn't think the lions needed to go for it. I think all those three teams needed to get rest and the lions paid the price and it's going to cost them. They are losing this game. Sean McVay is a better coach than Dan Campbell. Matt Stafford's a better quarterback than Jared Goff, and the lot and the Lions just are beat up. the The Rams have a better defense by far. The Lions, honestly, are probably one of the worst defenses in the league, and their secondary is about as bad as it gets in the league. And you're telling me I've got two elite receivers coming in, and Matt Stafford's a top three quarterback in the NFL. I mean, like if there's one game that could flip the script and get ugly where the home team gets blown out, it's this game. Uh, where you at, Diddy? Yeah, I'm not I'm not on a side here. Like I said, I will lean and like that um the money line um round robin with the Rams because I just think they're live. I do think the hey, Laporte injury is gonna be major for the Detroit Lions, but the yeah. The line only dropping a half a point and jumping in and start opening at three and a half when they already knew that Laporte is going to be out is telltale to me. So, but at the same time, you know, you're talking about a, and we spoke about this early on in the year when Detroit played the, the Atlanta Falcons. And um, I told you that they have one of the best run defenses in the NFL, and they still do. They still do. So my play would be carry on Williams under um, his rushing, rushing yards. I think this game, oh, he will not be. Um, Going off, and I like Karrion Williams, but I believe in his de- in his Detroit uh, Lions run defense. Um, so that'll be my play. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, like I said, I said it against the Falcons. What was that? Week three, week four. Yeah, early on in the season, yeah. they did it against um, uh, whoever that was. I forgot that was there. Yeah, I think we've proven over time that was more Arthur Smith. That's what I mean. The reason he got fired is because he had no idea how to handle his running back room. Right? That's kind well, of. Well, I mean, but I'm not. I'm not really just particularly tired. I think we 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 touched on that game about the defensive run against the run. Like I think it's Detroit now, finished now middle we... of the pack against the run. So I don't think they finished upper echelon against the run. I think they finished middle of the pack against yeah, the, the run. The the, oh. the bad thing about them, especially as they ended the season, was. Their pass defense. I mean, Nick yeah. Mullins threw for almost 800 yards. I do like your bet, you know. though. Well, yeah, I was six. I, I mean, they're still ranked twice number two in that league. They, they didn't. They can't finish middle of the. Yeah, pack I hear what you're saying. Number yeah. number two. I'm only talking about the run game. I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm the not saying they're, they're, yeah. passing defense is atrocious. But, but when they're, they're atrocious, playing against yeah. the run for for carry on Williams over 84, give me the under. Yeah, yeah I, no, I, I get that, I, and I'm I'm not mad at it. I'm just. It's tough for me because I think at this point, this run game is quite maybe matchup proof. And I only say that because I'm looking back at it. He had 87, 104, 152, 114, 88, 143, 158, and then 53. He had 53 against us. But listen to the the, the fronts he's faced. He's faced Cleveland. He's faced Baltimore. He's faced New Orleans. And even though Washington traded everybody, Washington's front didn't fall off too much once they traded everybody from Sweat and Chase. So that's all That's all I'm looking at. I'm looking at the matchup, per se, especially against Baltimore. At Baltimore, he had over 100 yards. And you know that defense is stingy. And then followed up before that, he had 88 against Cleveland. So I think what, what helps your bet is the game flow. Once they start passing – I'm not sure if they're going to get back to the run because if I'm Stafford, I'm going there to throw 500 fucking yards. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I am tossing it all day. So I don't mind the bet. I would just be, you know, wary about that bet because he's run against good fronts. Yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying. You said the Ravens, but Ravens are middle of the pack against the run. I mean, there's levels to the defense. I mean, I don't want to argue too much about this, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you go. Yeah. Defenses are good as a whole. For instance, last year the Eagles were good against the the edge rushing and their run defense. Earlier this year, the Eagles is ranked high and did really well against the run. They've completely bottomed out. And now Let's not try to use the Eagles as an example, please. I'm just saying it can't stop a nosebleed. <laughs> what I'm right. saying as far as Detroit Lions, they have not stopped. They continuously have have held. 
their running backs under 80, I want to say it's like 80 plus yards average. I see what you're saying. This season. He's on the other end. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So I'm just well, say, so yeah. they're third they're third in the league in yards per carry, right? 3.7. So that's mm-hmm. that's the stat that matters, right? Because total yards goes into attempts and all this and certain running back carries, sometimes deep, sometimes players you're going or teams you're going against split carries. So it's hard to look at individual running backs against you. The one stat that matters is yards per carry, your defense. That's the stat that's tried and true. Doesn't that's matchup proof, and they're third in the league, right? So that's a good bet. They're probably going to stop Kieran Williams. 